We are joined by UC Irvine head coach David Niffin, runners up in the 2023 Outrigger Big West Men's Volleyball Championship presented by the Hawaiian Islands. We will start by asking coach for an opening statement and then open the floor to questions from media members in the room. We ask all media to please identify yourself and your outlet before asking your question. Coach, if you would just start us off with an opening statement about tonight's match. Sure, uh, first nod would just be to the execution of the staff, everybody from people greeting us at the door to the people behind the scenes putting it on. Uh, everything I heard from every coach was that this was a really well-run event, uh, pretty electric environment in there in the end, so uh, I think we'll, we'll count that as an opening statement. Questions? Good evening, Coach. Aaron Rodriguez, host of Set Point Volleyball Podcast on IE Sports Radio. Obviously, it's a tough loss. You nearly forced a fifth set against the number one team in the nation. What were the positives of tonight's match as you look to hopefully have some more volleyball? A really well phrased question, and I appreciate that. Uh, being down 8 0 was pretty special. Uh, because of what came after that. You know, that certainly wasn't the plan to make a hitting error and then to, to just watch it avalanche on us. But I, it does say a lot about, I think, the, um, the ability of our team to continue to compete uh, going into set four. You know, to, to be down 8-0 and then to effectively get smashed in set three to come back and compete with a point-to-point -point mentality shows that we're trying to compete. Obviously, everybody's trying to win, um, but we were really competing doing the best that we could with what we had at that moment. Well, it was a good team. We knew it was going to be a narrow path, so I don't think there was ever any illusion that this was going to be easy. Um, nobody, nobody thought it was going to be 0-8 in one of the sets either, but uh, that was a positive for sure, just to watch us be competitive. There, there's no doubt in my mind we're one of the top teams in the country. Um, you know, we passed the eye test. We're competing with everybody. We got swept only by Hawaii and Long Beach, who you know, I, mean, I think we're competing with them as well, so it's it's been fun to watch that and I'm hopeful the season doesn't end here. Bob Kaiser, Orange County Register. Uh, coming off the second set when you guys had a good flurry at the end to get the win, uh, so what happened to a team when all of a sudden you come out and all of a sudden the team runs off eight points? Yeah, there's a, there's, it's so tempting to look up at the scoreboard and just say what is happening. Uh, but we've seen it go the other direction too, and, and for those of us that have been in enough volleyball matches, we've been on both ends of that. Uh, and we've also seen those leads get erased over time. It was obviously going to be difficult against a team like that, but the, the main comments that we have in that space is, is steady the ship. You know, there's really nothing that needs to be focused on behind us. Yeah. Uh, we can't go backwards in time on the score, so great athletes are present athletes, athletes that are living in that moment. That was, a, that was a challenge and a big ask, but I thought they responded well and they continued to compete. I mean, that, that lead didn't get bigger as the match, as the set went on. Uh, so that said a lot about the maturity of the players uh, in that moment. So, distance traveled with this team has been fun. It's been a lot of growth. Donnell Fuller from New, U, New, Uni, U, New Uni, University. Sorry, my apologies. I'm with you. <laughs> um, how does your squad grow and develop from tonight's loss? Well, we'll see. You know, I, one of the things I told them in the locker room, uh, I can't tell you what to feel in your heart, you know, just in terms of where you're at with this, whether you're frustrated or you feel like it's someone else's fault, but I can tell you the behaviors uh, that good teammates operate by. And my expectation is how we grow up from tonight is um, that they they're mindful of how they speak to each other, they're mindful of how they talk to their parents, they're mindful of how they talk to the media, and they take ownership, and like great competitors do. They take ownership of themselves first, and then they, they don't worry about pointing around or what could have gone wrong, or this call, or this guy making a play, and uh, they look to themselves to improve first. And um, so I expect we grow, because through losses, we get, we get opportunity to practice that. Nobody likes to lose. Uh, but with those losses, it becomes some moments to test ourselves a little bit. You know, it's uh, it's that classic analogy of if you shake a water bottle, you know what comes out, and what comes out is what's inside. So we're agitated right now. You know, we lost. We're under some stress. Uh, we get to see what comes out a little bit, and we get to decide what we do with that. Uh, that's that's how I think we'll grow from tonight. 
Your team saw the return of Cole Gillis, who put up some solid numbers. What can you say about Cole's return following the previous two matches where he missed those two matches? Grateful he could get on the court and compete. You know, I know he wanted to. Um, I made choices in the earlier matches to, to protect him a little bit, just in terms of uh, making sure he was as fresh as he could possibly be coming down the stretch. And, uh, Akil got out there, and the way Akil had been playing, I yeah, felt like that would be a, a good opening play for us. And um, But Cole certainly gives us a nice nice surge there with some of the things he does, so it was, it was good to have him on the court. Maybe you made a point last night about uh, how much of the season was came down to one play, one touch. And during the fourth set, the emotions of your team was just so visible when, you know, they get an opportunity and they miss four, it. and or then another opportunity, yeah. and it sort of goes along. And it, you could look at their faces, and they're going, they're trying to say, "What can we do to put that third point in the row together?" That's it. Yeah. Uh, you saw some passion tonight. You saw some guys trying really, really hard. Uh, and yeah, what do you say in those moments? I mean, you want them to be. You know, mature and, and not too high with the highs and not too low with the lows, uh, but you could tell they were they were searching. You know, what could we do to string some of these together? What, what could we do to eliminate one error? Uh, and look, some of these shots that they missed tonight. I mean, they had a great one late by Amir. I mean, he missed it by two feet. You know, with, on a good good opportunity that he's typically scoring on. So, you know, again, that's one of those one play moments. Um, so yeah, I think it's what we've been just saying all season. It's, really can be as close as one touch when you're two, dealing with two really good teams. Coach, how confident are you in terms of possibly getting an at-large bid into the NCAA tournament? I'm not too concerned with that because that's outside my control. Uh, what I will say is that um, competitors love to compete. You know, we would love to keep playing. Um, and be great but you know like what we can control is what we can control and uh, I think what I am confident in is that we're a top five team in the country uh, and we're gonna go into a, a NCAA tournament that's gonna have seven teams in it and I know Alan said this last night with Long Beach and you know it's just it's so cool to be part of this conference uh, where there's so it's so competitive uh, it's so fun to play against the best teams and uh, it is tough to just watch Competitors go on and get to you know teams get to keep playing while there's really competitive teams uh, sitting on the outside I'm excited for the the future and the hope of uh, tournament expansion things like that or, or Whatever language we put on it, but the idea of more teams getting an opportunity after their conference tournaments to continue into a postseason of some format uh, I'm really excited for that as far as this year goes um, We'll leave that up to uh, the committee. I'm grateful for the, the people that are on it doing their diligent work And I'm supportive of whatever decision they make Coach, you touched on it briefly in your opening statement. Uh, talk about uh, the opportunity to host this championship at your event here. Yeah, yeah, just push back a couple years. Uh, yeah, we're grateful to host. Uh, you, I, you saw a great environment tonight. Um, that's as loud as any venue we've been in. Uh, it's a, I've said for a while this is a great place to host because it's, a, it's not a competitive disadvantage for anyone. Uh, you know, and, and people ask, you know, how's the home court advantage at, at UC Irvine? And yes, it's familiar, and you know, the commute is short. Uh, but in terms of just the playing venue, it's it's a very neutral place to play that gets a great environment. And we were able to get some Southern California fans that uh, were able to show up, and you know, even I saw some fans from other places in the country that maybe you know aren't in a position where they can afford to go to Hawaii or make those kinds of trips. So we got some people access to the Big West Championship that if it's you know. In the islands, maybe we wouldn't get it. But it's on the mainland, they get a chance to, to be here. And um, so I know there were other people that were appreciative of it of it being here as well. Do you have any real hope that the NSF Light will wake up and instead of adding new teams that are just starting out on their volleyball tradition and start looking at the West Coast as usual, you know? packing a top 12, top 10, top 12, and still only getting, you know, the barest, not the absolute minimum number of bids available to 
Yeah. Is that ever going to change? Uh, you, you just mean like in terms of an expanded bracket? Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it does seem like that's on the horizon. Uh, I, I do think that's coming. Uh, and but again, you know, as a competitor, we don't control as teams, and you know, we certainly advocate for that as coaches, and we will advocate for a bigger field uh, because of the excitement of that and the momentum that can create towards the championship. I think it becomes a better championship experience when you have a build up to it, a, a, a true quarterfinal, semifinal, final of some sort where there's a build up. So I think that creates a really healthy environment for volleyball. Uh, I also think just as competitors, uh, because we don't control the structure we play within, we've got to continue to stay focused on doing the absolute best we can with what we've got. Uh, and what you're seeing it are some elite conference tournaments, uh, and that's exciting too. So we're, we're creating that at least, and I think the Big West is doing a nice job of that. We're, we're making a statement that you can have a great tournament. Uh, and so you know, we hope that that continues to go and distill its way up, I guess. But I think the Big West is doing a great job of being a model for the country just in terms of uh, how the events are put on and uh, what is possible in terms of engagement from a fan standpoint and, and certainly just quality of play. So. All right, thanks coach. Good to go, thank you. Mm -hmm.